All right, ladies and gentlemen, so glad that you could be here tonight. What's good, Warrensville? Everybody, I, I, I can see so many cool people like that came aboard. Uh, spread the word, please. Like, let them know that, you know, we're working real hard to make this a really, really beautiful experience and give a lot of information, pertinent information uh, that I find and you will find to be quite eye-opening about the city that we love, which is Warrensville Heights. Big salute, big ups to Warrensville Heights and all of those who make her the city that she is, y'all. Uh, I see several people out here that's, that's joining us. I see my man, Ken Hill, Guy Brown, Tanika Bridges. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shout out to your mom, Sheba. And also to uh, Yvonne China Hicks Jones, Kev Allen. Young Quintetta Stubblefield that knocked them home runs all day. She was killing it back in the day. Charles Alexander Parkton, my Westwood brother. Dwine Buford, Cliff Morrow, Kim Bolin, welcome. Lloyd Hill, welcome. Oh man, this is so awesome. And of course, my heart, my man, Eric Lingenfelter has been so awesome. And my man, Terrell Reedus, dude. All the way out from where you at, you watching long distance, bruh. Definitely appreciate, you know, how you rolling out with it. You feel me? I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be just talking to y'all live and to share some of this cool information I got. Good evening to you too, Mr. Lingenfelter. Everybody, we've got a great show coming up tonight. Uh, we're going to get right to it. Uh, we're going to have Mr. Ray Freeman. Um, an interview that is a long time in the making. And, you know, the brother is just, man, he could have just went and went and went. He just has so much good information. And he is so active and busy in this community. He is what's good about Warrensville, y'all. He's one of those people that loves and cares about this city. And he loves and cares about each one of you. So I definitely want to feature that man. And he's coming up very shortly. We're also going to flip to part two of our Sound of Ideas uh, interview that, that was conducted by um, uh, the PBS company Sound of Ideas uh, right there at the Warrensville Heights High School Library. We're going to have part two. It's going to be very good. It's going to have Superintendent Jolly. It's going to have Board President Tracy Mitchell and, of course, our mayor, Mr. Bradley Sellers, y'all. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Hit the like buttons, subscribe and follow to this page. We really need you. I need you. Just glad to have you all. You know, it's just an exciting time. And uh, man, all I can say is, what's good, Warrensville? Let's kick it. Ray Freeman interview coming up next. We're going live uh, with Mr. Ray Freeman. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ray has been the uh, president of the school board as, as we know it. Um, he's also been, I, I'm sure he, I'm gonna let him actually tell you, you know, cause he'll gonna get it correct. Um, but Ray is a dynamic individual that, you know, I just, I'm so excited um, to just be face to face with them through our virtual network here. Um, just to just to bring a little bit about what's good Warrensville. When you say what's good Warrensville, man, you have to look back at Ray Freeman. I mean, Ray Freeman is the embodiment of what is good in Warrensville. So I want to say hello to you, Ray. Thank you for joining me. Um, I just want to uh, take a moment and say, hey, Ray, can you just kick off your pedigree? What is what are you currently doing? Your current title, your current role. Um, that you have right now in Warrensville. I want to thank you, Ron Woodson, being a friend of mine for over well over 30 some odd years. I want to thank you for putting this together. It's really shedding a light on the city I love and you love, Warrensville Heights. And uh, my current position, and I hold a lot of titles, so bear with me, Ron. But uh, <laughs> I'm current. I did serve as the president of Warrensville Heights City School District from 2017 to 2019. Uh, ended in uh, 18. So 2019 is our other classmate, Tracy Mitchell. She's uh, holding that rank and she holds that gavel. But uh, that's what my position is at the Warrensville Heights City School District, is the vice president of the school boards. But what we do is make decisions 
and recommendations from uh, the superintendent, Donald J. Jolly II. He's also a 1991 grad. And I know you had been working with him and giving them some information about some of the things that they should bring to the scholars of the Warrensville Heights City School District. So other than um, being the vice president of Warrensville Heights City School District, I'm also uh, the um, actual steering member of the National, um, the National School Board Association. So the National School Board Association, it has 14 members across the country in public education. And then we have a vice chair who was our previous vice chair. So I serve with another 14 people on a national stage. And what we do, Ron, is we meet four times a year. We have an annual conference right in September, but we meet and we have another probably about, let's say four, well, we have more than that. We have about 700 people that come to various sites that we decide as a steering committee and they come and they hear about the best practices of urban districts and how to serve black and brown kids. So I'm very proud of that. And I actually just got um, reelected here in, uh, in April. So you get a three year term. So now I'm on my four months, well, five months now, of my next three years. So the max term is six years. And uh, I'm proud to serve on that. I'm proud to put Warrensville Heights City School District on the map. Um, we do have a, a publication, which is the American uh, School Board Journal. And every month that American School Board Journal has my name and it has the Warrensville Heights City School District as being one of those 14 members on uh, what is called the Council of Urban Boards of Education, which we just uh, commonly call it Q. But it's a it's a great it's a great uh, actual uh, conference when we have it. It's a great uh, actual uh, it's an actual great uh, for me to be a part of that. So it gives our about 1,800 Warrensville uh, school students, or scholars we call them, to be addressed. And I can uh, have something addressed in the American Journal or we talk. I mean, I think they did like two articles last, the last four years about me and about Warrensville security and about Warrensville other schools. It's good to put a light on. And then my third job, I'm the president of the uh, Tri-City Democratic Club. And what I do is run a meeting every month, one meeting a month, and we have about, now we have about 30 uh, actual members, but it's uh, actual uh, residents that's actually from the Warrensville Heights, for North Randall, and Highland Hills that's member. Um, it's a $15 uh, actual uh, membership fee, but we meet every month and we talk about what's going on in politics in Cuyahoga County and statewide. Um, we have uh, members that come and we have a uh, we have uh, the mayor of Warrensville Heights, Brad Sellers, who attends. We have uh, the actual now, uh, we have the now uh, Kyle County Democratic Chairwoman, Chantel Brown. She's a Warrensville resident, so she's there commonly every uh, month. And then we have other members, but it's good to meet with some of the elders and senior citizens that is engaged in a political process. So uh, I've been the mayor, I mean, I've been the president of that organization from 2018, 2019. So uh, that gives me much joy to give them information and let them know what's happening in the city, what's happening in the school board, what's happening locally in politics. And uh, sometimes I've had uh, Marsha Fudge just do a call in or Marsha Fudge would give information, even though, you know, she's in this area. And then my fourth job, I'm a, my actual mortgage, uh, I'm a mortgage banker. I do financing for real estate properties um, in in probably about 47 states. I have that, so I'm doing a lot. But yeah, with the Warrensville School Board is my heart, and then uh, the actual Tri City Democratic Club, that's my heart too. Um, the National School Board Q, that's my heart, and then uh, I'm a mortgage banker at a, a bank called TCF Bank here in uh, Beachwood. Yeah, right. <clears throat> That's why I let you uh, kick it because nobody can kick it like you. Um, you, you know, you pretty much um, let us know how hard working and what it takes to really when you when you're that passionate, man. Sometimes you got to spread yourself around because you have a vision. That's you know, true. you got a you got a vision of what you would like to see. You know, and a, you know, a lot of us have that feeling, but we need that leadership, man. Is somebody willing to step up and show us the way to be a light? 
you know, that leads all of us um, and helps us, you know, and we get in where we fit in to, to, to make a small difference. But it's people like yourself um, that, that really, really um, drives this thing. And we, on behalf of a lot of people who feel the same way, Ray, I, I just want to say thank you to you, brother. Thank you. We appreciate what you do. Um, I just want to say, I don't know how this uh, works, but how is your relationship with City Hall, sir? You know, because I know it, it, it's a symbiotic relationship. How is your relationship with City Hall? And from what I understand with South University, you know, that area is going to be have a new designation, if I'm not mistaken. And there may be some close proximity between the mayor and yourselves. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that, sir? Well, in, in uh, negotiations with the city of Warrensville Heights um, and the mayor, Brad Sellers, he's our classmate. He uh, looked at options to move the city hall. The city hall has been there quite some time on Warrensville, uh, Warrensville Center Road, but it wasn't actually, um, it wasn't compatible to have the actual jail there. So the jail needed to be updated. Um, there was no uh, ADA compliance to actually have a, have a, for a handicap. So when he looked at this about three years ago, he said, you know, we need to have a new place, a new city hall um, will um, help all of the actual residents of Warrensville Heights City. Um, and what he came up with, it was, um, it was actually by luck. Um, South University, South University was in that building and South University had outgrew it um, they had a move and they only been in there five years. So uh, when the actual opportunity came to Mayor Sellers, he looked into it and see how he could actually finance it, how he could move the city of Warrensville Heights City Hall in there. And then once all that was um, going on, probably uh, October of last year, 2019, he came to, um, uh, to the board as a director of all five members of the board and our superintendent saying would this be something that we would look into because we have a building at the board of education that's 1972 i actually went there ron for um a pre-kindergarten so i went to pre-kindergarten in that building before we moved over to westwood and um it came to about like the board said yeah we'll look at options so we explored options we looked at what the cost would be and would it help um with the 1972 building and, you know, I, I go over there probably once a month. I just was seeing that we need to move. And the other four board members knew that too. So we took it upon ourselves, all five of the board members that was uh, elected in Warrensville Heights to say, hey, let's look at possibly moving our, uh, our, uh, our board of education over there. So after long negotiations, after looking at all options, after looking at the financial piece of it, we said, this makes sense. We look at what we're paying now, and with the older building, we would spend well over ten or twenty thousand dollars a year in upkeep of that uh, that uh, board of uh, education on Warrensville Center Road. So we just signed an agreement with them last week that we will be actual tenants of that building on uh, on uh, Richmond Road. So we are going in there. The projected dates are um, this October 2020. And uh, we will have the upper uh, second floor, just a wing of it. So we're going to have a, about 60, 6,600 square foot. And that's going to be for our actual superintendent. That's going to be for our actual treasurer and financial um, financial chief. That's going to be for our assistant uh, superintendent. And it's going to be for our HR department. And we have a space that we will put our uh, pupil services. So when you come to register, uh, what Mayor Brad Sellers had an idea and we thought about it, it gives you a one stop or wraparound services. So when you've got to put your child into the Warrensville Heights City School District, you can go right there and uh, get all the information you need to actually put them in the Warrensville Heights City School District. So it's a great thing. We're excited about it. Um, I know uh, Superintendent Jolly is excited about it and his staff. So you're 100%, we just signed the lease. Uh, I mean, we approved the lease, we haven't been signed, but we approved the lease last week and Warrensville Heights City School District will be on um, will be on Richmond Road in the Old South University. 
man, that's that's a lot of great information. And I didn't realize how soon you guys were <clears throat> going to be moving, man. That's man, yeah, that's going to be October. a lot of work to be done. So, I, hey, man, I'm a, I'm going to definitely leave you to it, brother. I, I just want to finish up, Ray, uh, by asking you um, what gives you the most satisfaction from this I, I don't uh, it may be a moment maybe a student maybe uh, uh, just what have given you the, the internal satisfaction um, if it's you can take us through a moment uh, just something man just something that's really personal that really just touches you in a deep place and gives you a, a certain level of fulfillment knowing that you were a part of it. it's a legacy uh, Ron it's a legacy when I look at your dad, your mom, I look at the street we raised up. If I can give something back, you gotta look at legacy. You gotta look at what can I do when when it's all said and done and you put me in the grave and throw dirt on me, what did I do in my city to make a change? That's fantastic. Legacy. That's fantastic. I feel the legacy <laughs> and uh, that's what we all um, that have the love for this city and have love for our classmates. I hope they look at this and understand that we love them so, um, we and we love our city and all those who work hard to move it forward. Um, thank you so much, Ray, uh, for taking the time out and just sharing with our audience, you know, just some of the things that you're doing and some of the things the city is doing and how we're progressing and moving forward. I hope to have you on again, sir, as we progress through this move. Um, and some of your accomplishments, and thank you for taking the school, helping to take the schools out of that deficit and, and on the border or brink of being taken over by the state, you know, and, and bringing them out of there with Donald Jolly leading the way, you know, and you guys clearing the path so that he can do his job. So uh, thank you so much for that, sir. And I would like to say though, Ron, in uh, 2000, and you were there, you and your wife had came to those um, meetings in 2018, as you stated, um, the Ohio uh, school board, so, I mean, oh, excuse me, the Ohio uh, education was thinking about taking us over. We had been an F district for many years, but with the leadership of Superintendent Donald J. Jolly II, uh, with me coming aboard and, and Tracy Mitchell and some of the other board members, um, I think we uh, engaged in conversation. I know I've talked to Sherrod Brown, I talked to Marsha J. Fudge. I went deeper because my, plat my, my platform on a national stage in public education had me to have that clout that I could actually go to these people and fight for Warrensville. I could never ever have it in the mayor too, Brad Sellers, that they came and took Warrensville over. We're not like a, um, getting taken over like a East Cleveland or the other uh, Youngstown, not in, not in my neck of the woods. So um, a lot of meetings, a lot of, um, a lot of talking to um, lobbyists, a lot of talking to just uh, public officials on a national level. I've been in the office of Sherrod Brown. I've been in the office of the Marsha Fudge, and I told them our concerns and our children. So, you know, I think they heard us. I think me and Mr. Jolly put over 700 signs ourselves, me and him. We wanted to get it out to say, hey, you know, we, we, we got a lot on our back. And I also forgot to tell you, Ron, that we're building two brand new buildings, well, three brand new buildings. So we're getting brand new schools right on um, on uh, Clarkwood. We're building a brand new pre-K to fifth grade that will be done by October. I mean, state of the arts, uh, it's 120,000 square foot, but I go in there every week with Superintendent Jolly and we walk through it. That's going to be an outstanding wait, wait, wait. building. Could you say that one more room. time? Could you say that one more time? How many square feet is this building? Like 120,000 square feet. Wait, I can't even imagine what 120,000 square feet. <laughs> well, you know, the old Randallwood site, if you take Randallwood and you start from where the old Lawson's were or right there on Northfield and you go all the way back. And also we're putting four new brand new basketball courts out there, outside basketball courts for all the residents. I mean, we're doing that. So you're going to have four brand new basketball courts, brand new. And then you're going to have a brand new um, high school gym and an elementary school. So uh, I'll send you pictures and you can look and Superintendent Jolly always sends that out to, to let you guys know, but we're putting a brand new school there. And then um, they're doing surveys now on a new middle school and high school. 
So where the actual recreation uh, sits, that's gonna be our new high school. And on the left side, where the old band room, and uh, that's gonna be the middle school. So that's gonna be built on the football field. So the football field will be the front entrance for um, a middle to the left and a high school to the right. And we will have a brand new football stadium, a brand new basketball arena. So uh, we're, been, we're doing big things in Warrensville Huts. My God, brother, that's speechless, man. <laughs> I'm speechless. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's all about the legacy. I tell Superintendent Jolly, it's like people may not know what we do, but you always want to treat people right. And they can always say, you know, and I've heard it from uh, Stanley Miller, who was a board member and other people that, man, y'all doing things that uh, is going to be lived forever. So, you know, when they talk about Donald J. Jolly, Ray Freeman, uh, Tracy Mitchell, uh, Mimi Gator, uh, Barbara Muman, and, um, and, uh, and our new member, we talk Earl about Earl Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, the they saying, hey, they made movements. But like you said, Ron, and you know the work that I do and he does, it's hard work, but the work is getting done. So um, I'm proud of that, but the legacy, you know, like they had uh, uh, that little rapper, uh, Nipsey, the uh, marathon Nipsey. continues, the legacy continues. I mean, so we're gonna continue the legacy, you know, and it's gonna be known what we did for the school district. Thank you so much, Ray. And, and with that, I think um, nothing would be better to finish it off with than for you to give a big shout out to What's Up Warrensville in your own way, sir. What's up, Warrensville? I love you. Right on. That's what's good about Warrensville, y'all. And Ray Freeman is truly um, the embodiment of what's good about us, y'all. Thank you from, so much. And uh, back to the show. Thank you. All right, I want to welcome y'all back. I'm so glad. I hope. What did you think? In the comments, let me know what you thought about it. I see some of y'all, you know, kind of, you know, let them know that you really appreciated Brother Ray Freeman and some of the things that he had to say um, regarding the new facility. Man, tw uh, <clears throat> that's crazy. At South University, y'all know where it is, you know, right on Richmond Road, headed towards McDonald's off Emory. That's going to be big, y'all, that they're going to take over that space and consolidate everything and have so many surfaces under one roof so that when you go and register a student, a new a child for school, whatnot, I mean, basically, you could get everything you need under one roof without having to travel to and fro. Uh, that's a step forward. That That is a great, great thing to do. Um, and also, very poignant uh, thing about the expanse the the sheer mass giant facility uh that will be on the site where once we went to our beautiful beloved randall wood it is no longer y'all it's about to be something totally new and something totally awesome i've seen the construction i'm going to report to you uh and let you know how that construction is going because it is going and just the sheer size of it and there are concept photos of this uh, uh, giant structure that's just gonna blow your mind. So the elementary school is gonna be something where people are actually gonna wanna bring their kids to. And uh, these guys are gonna do their best to make sure it's stocked with the best teachers um, that they can possibly get for the young people today. So uh, in that, I wanna just say kudos to you, hats off uh, to everybody uh, who is a part of you know, making these things happen, man. I'm just excited as hell. I just want to give a shout out to a few of y'all. I see Angela Hall saying, that's great news. It's very exciting. I'm going to like that comment right now. Brownwin Stalker, affectionately known as Bonnie, says, outstanding. Let's put our money back into the school as a reunion venue instead of third-party vendors. Okay, Warrensville, do you hear that? And I see my sister, Joyce Roberts, Man, I see you over there. School board member Earl Roberts' mom, who I had the pleasure of meeting, you know, at my job. And she said she wanted to meet me. And I was excited, took a picture with her. It was awesome. I was so flattered. Awesome. Um, even spoke to Mayor Sellers. Man, at my job, he came up doing a little shopping. So, you know, I had to throw a plug for the show. And I said, Mayor, 
I would love to get you on, but if I do, we're going to have to do something real special with you. You know, not the typical, just, you know, kind of like interview, talking head. No, we got to do something real special. So if y'all got some ideas, y'all throw them in the comment section. I really welcome that. Um, if you got class reunions, I want you to go to the War What's Good Warrensville page. And I want you to throw them up there. And I want to shout them out. Uh, make sure that we use this as a bulletin board for what you're doing. And that everybody can rally around and know that this show is focused on what's good in Warrensville Heights. And meeting and greeting and loving on each other is definitely part of that that whole thing. So right now, uh, I'm going to take a moment to go to uh, a piece uh, that we like to say, Warrensville Recycles. Because we do. That's a big initiative now. And uh, oh, my wife Stephanie kind of chimed in, you know, meshing me in the comments. Thank you, baby. I see you. Love you. Love my wife Stephanie for real. So big shout out to Stephanie. Um, but yeah, we're going to cut over to this and then we're going to go right into a piece uh, from uh, some Warrensville students about the bullying. Um, that's back from 2012. Beautiful segment. So I'm just going without further ado, we're going to roll that tape. Hello, everybody. My name is Rand, the Warrensville Recycling Environmental News. I want to talk to you about the importance of recycling. Let me say, recycling is easy to do and can really make a difference with a little bit every day. Remember your friend Ren when you go to the recycling bin. Take some plastic, take the can, then do it all over again. You think I'm just one person. What difference can I make? My answer, a lot. Each one of you can make a big difference. Did you know you make about 1,600 pounds of waste every year and up to 1,100 pounds of it can be recycled? That's a half a ton of waste each year that can be removed from our planet. By the simple act of recycling, recycling old cans, plastics, paper, and glass materials takes something that isn't useful anymore and makes it into something new instead of just throwing it away. This means creating cleaner land and healthier air, which we can all enjoy. Remember, landfills create dangerous carbon emissions, creating the harmful effects of climate change. So we all need to do our part to lower the impact of pollution and carbon emissions. But did you know the easiest way to do that is through recycling? You know, folks, Earth has a limited amount of resources that we use up every day. And while Earth does a good job of recycling on its own, we're using the resources faster than the Earth can keep up. So let's all pitch in and help. By reusing waste through recycling, we decrease the need to take more from Earth creating a healthier planet. Recycling at home can be easy when you know how. Think carefully about what you buy. When shopping, look for products that can be easily recycled, like glass jars and tin cans. You should also look for products that have already been made from recycled materials. As you use them, collect materials like glass, paper, aluminum, and plastic in a bin, <laughs> just like me. So what do you say? Who wants to take the first steps with me and create a cleaner Warrensville Heights and planet through recycling? Remember, Ram, when you go to the recycling bin, take some plastics, take a can, then do it all over again. My Warrensville Heights friends. What is this? What are you doing? I'm oh. trying to stay. Like, you got your book. No. He, he got your book. Go get your book. Don't, get don't your book from him. We're trying to touch the book. Stop touching. Y'all ain't gonna fight though. Could you, stop touching. I know you're gonna fight. Hey, hey, hey. Stop bullying. Stop bullying. Stop bullying. Stop bullying.
All right, y'all. That was some of the folks that just wanted to say, you know, look, as a peer group, um, you know, we do some bad things, you know, because we get caught up into what we, um, to where we at at the time. You feel me? Like, you know, I used to get excited about fights, you know, just like anybody else. You know, we got excited about them things. You know, it was like the most excitement, like a young person could experience besides, you know, sporting events. I mean, we didn't really have that much to get excited about. So, yeah, we got excited about that stuff. And, you know, sometimes it creates a pack mentality, you know. And when you have that pack mentality, man, you throw out humanity. And you just just think about the brutality that, that can be inflicted for your own entertainment, for your own enjoyment. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to stay true to the focus, like Mr. Terrell Reader said, and we're going to make sure that this thing is all about positive progression and moving forward. If anybody's about that, if you know somebody that's in Warrensville, that's a member of the Warrensville family, whether they went to the schools or whether they're just residents or whether they just love this city and are partnering with this city, I want y'all to leave that in the comments. You know, let me know who is doing good work in this city somebody that needs to be recognized and, and memorialized and i want to put them out there so that we know that this person is moving this city forward um and, the, and then i'll double check that i'll make sure that i double check it and make sure i fact check and things like that so that being said y'all i want to kind of take it to that next level i promised you the part two of the sound of ideas uh so that's going to be a, a, a big deal coming up. Um, Sound of Ideas with Donald Jolly, Tracy uh, Mitchell, and Mayor Sellers. So without further ado, y'all, I'm about to kick it like this. I'm Mike McIntyre here with a live audience at the Warrensville Heights branch of the Cuyahoga County Public Library, the fifth stop on our 2019 community tour. We are talking about the recent progress made by the Warrensville Heights City School District. In the past two years, the district had managed to boost the state report card overall grade from an F to a C. We're talking with some stakeholders in the schools here now about how to raise a failing district. What are the next steps for improvement? What can other districts learn from this success? In a little bit, we're gonna be talking with a teacher and interven inter intervention specialist and with a stellar student as well. So stay tuned for that. Staying with us in the conversation now though is Donald Jolly II. He's the superintendent of the Warrensville Heights City School District. Tracy Mitchell is the board president and Brad Sellers is the mayor of the city of Warrensville Heights. And again, if you'd like to add your thoughts to the conversation, come on right on up to the microphone. And before we take the next audience question, I allowed two of you or asked two of you to give me some thoughts on how you can sustain this momentum. Uh, mayor Sellers, you have thoughts on that as well? Yeah, so I, I just think from the city perspective, which is, is aligned with the district, but different. We're really the engine to help power some of the things they need to do. The way the state of Ohio school funding system is set up is built upon property taxes, right? So that means the more we develop, the better off the district will be. So I would just say the city's part in the deal is to make sure we continue to develop and redevelop areas to make sure we don't stay stagnant. If, if folks in the, in the audience know, we looked at Randall Park Mall for entirely too long, and I know if I had been in any other city that was that was doing its job, right? We would not have to have to deal with that for 15 to 20 years, right? You have to empower the school district, and the way they're empowered is making sure they have the resources. They take those resources and put those back into the children, and that's what I think that they've done a great job in doing. You're starting to see the results in that in the testing. You're starting to see that in the belief within the people. But we all have a part to do it, 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 it in this puzzle. But you got to make sure that we're doing our part. One of the things the mayor just mentioned is school funding in the state of Ohio. It's been ruled unconstitutional several times. It has not been changed. Uh, there have been some tweaks to it. What, what about the school funding and how does that affect districts like Warrensville Heights District? Superintendent Jolly? Well, our district is blessed to sit on some real prime real estate here um, with North Randall, all the new development on Richmond Road that the mayor has indicated, the Chagrin Highlands. So we are uh, very blessed to have um, funding to support our schools. Okay. We have a member of the audience. Yes, sir. 
What's going on, y'all? My Hi name there. is uh, Trey. Um, I'm coming from the Maple Heights Boys League. Uh, it's a nonprofit, been around in Maple Heights for a long time. I don't have kids in Warrensville, but um, I'm really invested in Warrensville. I've coached so many kids in Warrensville, received so many kids from there to come play baseball, and kind of fill in that hole because I don't think you guys had a baseball league, a youth baseball league, for a long time. But with that being said, um, my question, it's not really a question, it's kind of a statement. I kind of want to know what you guys think about it. Um, so, like, I kind of have, like, a little bit of beef with the state reporting because it's like when I look at it and see all the A's, to me, I don't see, like, good school districts. I just see white school districts with money. And as you go down the list, the school districts get more color in them and less money. So basically what I'm trying to say is I think it's a load of crap. And I think that maybe focusing on what the parents and kids really need and want, which I honestly think y'all are doing a good job because when I'm in Maple, the things I'm hearing them say, I'm like, this isn't a D school district. My kids go to South Euclid. My daughter was acting out and they came and saw me. We came and sat there and I'm like, this ain't a D school district. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like, how do y'all work around a system that's clearly going against you guys and do something that is, you know, really helpful, truly helpful, <laughs> truly helpful to the citizens of Warrensville and not to the people in Columbus who are like, okay, they didn't do this, okay. that, and the third. Uh, and before you address that, you're, you're absolutely correct, by the way, sir. There's been a lot of statistical analysis, including recently in, on Cleveland.com, Rich Exner, the data analysis guy there, had looked at those numbers. And indeed, the wealthier the district, generally on average, the better the scores, the poorer the district, the worse the scores, the racial component also tracks to that. So we're looking at that and that's one of the reasons we're talking about school funding and, and why there are so many people that are saying it needs to be readjusted. But to our, uh, our audience members point, who would like to jump in on that? I could jump in. Well, we, we totally understand. Our uh, district has been lobbying against House Bill 70, the report card, since 2016. Uh, we understand if you look at the report card, you go straight by wealth, what report cards has, high, what grades and higher low. But our goal is to just do right by students, make sure our students are literate, make sure they can read, make sure they can comprehend. And then we also are great, big on exposure. We have to give students opportunities to see what they can be and do and, and provide those pathways. So our district has invested a lot in exposure opportunities. We've partnered with Bedford and Maple to expand our career tech options. Over 26 our students can have. We, we uh, bought culinary into our district. So uh, the report card, you gotta, you gotta play the game with the report card. If you don't play the game with the report card, they take you over. We, we can't let them take us over. So if we invest in, in our young students, our literacy, provide our older students with what they need to be successful, the report card takes care of itself. Right. And that's Car what Caramu, happened here. Caramu House in for Right, Caramu for House. We partner with Tri-C. We partner with anybody who has opportunities for our students. Uh, we, we, are, we have an opportunity where we, we're trying to establish rowing at the, at the high school. You know, you don't hear about rowing in this area, but our students gonna have that opportunity. So we're doing a lot here to try to expose our students. And it's not about the report card at all. It's about creating literate, cr critical thinkers who can go into the world and be successful. And, that, and the report card takes, take, that, that takes, it, it comes, we'll get the grades if we do that. Yet you do have to take, you do have to take the, the test. Uh, you do have to be uh, you do have to be graded by the state. There are many people that say the, the tests themselves are are either inherently biased or just don't do the kind of job that needs to be done. Uh, Tracy Mitchell, what about the idea that that uh, that we need to teach to the test essentially? Well, that's a struggle. And to Donald's point, we we know we have to take the test, so we have to teach to the test. But the goal is to ensure that we've got other academic programming that will expand the horizon, expand the reach of what the children are learning. We teach to the test, but we have to teach them to be able to look beyond the test. What are the other tool sets that they will need to be successful as they continue moving forward, as they matriculate from pre-K to, uh, to the middle school, all the way up to the high school, and then for those youngsters that are going to go the collegiate path, 
they are prepared, and for those that are going to a career path, they are prepared to move into their apprentices, apprenticeships, excuse me, or either move right on into the workforce. To the group behind me, do you need to come through? Come on through, guys. <laughs> All right. And as they are doing, just go right ahead. You're, you're fine. It's your library. <laughs> While that's happening, let's uh, take another question from our audience. Hello. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carletta Fellows. I'm a Warrensville alumni. Um, I'm also a boomerang. So having boomerang from an area and back to Warrensville now working for the city. When I first came back, I know that um, Superintendent Jolly had initiated a um, strategic planning um, core team, and he brought the city as well as other stakeholders. I wanted to ask the superintendent if he can elaborate on that, because I think that that's also one of the efforts that brought us all together to begin this process of really building our school system. Yeah, so initially, um, when I first came, there was a um, transition team and just studying the history of the superintendents here and the success or failure of the superintendents, one of the things that I identified is that um, the problems of the district was the superintendent's problems, not the community's problems or the school district problem. So what we did is um, formed a transition team. On this transition team, we had stakeholders from the community, we had parents, we had um, resident, long-term residents, Mr. Chambers and others were part of this. And basically what we did is laid out the district and ex explained what were the issues of the district. We looked at facilities, we looked at curriculum, we looked at human resources. And that transition team created our first strategic plan, which was called our Return to Excellence Plan. That plan was not my plan, but it was our community plan. It was the plan to drive us forward. And that was the first plan we used to Spirit, spearhead our, our, our transformation. From that, we did um, in 2020, uh, 2017, I'm sorry, started our, um, our strategic plan, which we included the same stakeholders. Again, it wasn't, wasn't um, Superintendent Jolly plan, but it was the community plan. And this plan, again, spearheaded our work. It was a mandate from the community, not from the superintendent, to make necessary changes to improve our district, to improve our curriculum, to make the necessary adjustments in our staffing, uh, to purchase things, and also to move forward on our new facilities. Um, over the past, over the 20 years, the state came to Warrensville over eight times, asking them to co-fund buildings. Warrensville said no each time. Um, when we came in, they came to us and asked us, and um, by the basis of that plan and laying out the, the issues with our buildings, we got full support and we are we're able to move forward. So the strategic plan, both strategic plans have been instrumental because they're, they have community support. The community was part of the, the designing of identifying what the problems were and then identifying strategies to improve. You're gonna have all new campuses uh, all new. in the district. Also, uh, Mayor, the city has stepped up uh, almost every time there was one time where it was a no on a, on a levy and, and was quickly corrected six months later, I think, with a, with a yes. But the, the community supports the schools in this city. Oh, they always have. And, and the, the, the thing that uh, the superintendent talked about that was correct is we took a case to the people and we made a case. And we had to have that response back from the people to tell us, is this a good idea? What do you think? I think one of the great things that, that the district has done, they've learned to meet people where they are. Right? And then once we meet you where you are, start devising plans to get you somewhere else, right? Because there's nobody in this city, I don't care in any city, that wants to be a failure. Nobody, right? And so you have to give avenues, and, and everybody's avenue is different. You know, some people are here uh, that they're they are high academic achievers. Some people are here are, are athletic in nature. But then we fold into academics and they understand the balance of what that needs to be. Some are in the arts, some are in the sciences. It's the exposure. And then not just the exposure, it really has been the collaboration because I don't think there's been a resource in this community that we have not tapped into to make them a part of this journey, right? And so no one can sit here and say that I didn't know anything about that. Who did that? Who decided right. that? The group decided it. And we went in a, in a, in a democratic fashion. The majority ruled the day. Yes, ma'am. Next question. Hi, my name is Merle Johnson. I'm a member of the Ohio Board of Education. And I want to talk about tax abatements. Uh, in Cleveland, um, first of all, 
two-thirds of the property tax is what goes to schools. And so it's very important for property taxes to be available for you to have decent schools. In Cleveland, uh, they've done a number of tax abatements. Tax abatement means that when someone wants to build, you, you negotiate with them and say you don't have to pay your property taxes for a certain number of years, and then the business says, okay, then we'll build in your city. And millions and millions of dollars have been taken away from Cleveland schools because of tax abatements. My question is, um, how do you get businesses? Do you do tax abatements? Uh, if not, how do you get businesses to build uh, in Warrensville? We were told in Cleveland that businesses would run out, run out of the city if we didn't have tax abatements. So talk about if you do abatements and how do you do them, if you May do them. Mayor, yes, can you so, address so that? So to, to Merle's point, and let me just thank Merle, because Merle's been a big part of our resurgence here, making sure that it was an advocate down in Columbus for districts like Warrensville, right? You have to have people there to represent your interests because everybody at the table has an interest, so you better have somebody at the table that represents your interests. So to the point of tax abatements, we do tax abatements, right? But the difference is, is how you structure the tax abatement. So the, the, the city has made a point of in a tax abatement deal, when we're recruiting a new business to come here, depending on, it has to be large of scale, the payroll has to be significant, and it's significant. We have made a, 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 a conscious effort uh, the city and the council have decided that when we do a tax abatement, we make the school district whole. The school district does not lose a dime, right? The city takes the short and the front, the front end of the deal, banking on that they're going to find a place so attractive that after the debatement period, they're going to still be here. And we have done, I think we've done 20 or 22 deals, and all 22 of them are still here, right? And so in that, in that period of 10 to 15 years, they become part of the fabric. Right? So, yeah, you could do a tax abatement deal the other way and, and short everybody, right? But we didn't think that was the best in the long run. And so you just have to be creative out here. We did tax abatements to bring companies in here because when I first started here, doing stuff like on, on Richmond Road or Harbor Park, the, the word I was getting early on, about, nobody want to settle a business like that in Warrensville. It's not going to happen here, right? right? They want to be in Beachwood. They want to be at an orange address, right? Well, after years of doing deals, we don't get that anymore. Right? We don't get that deal. We're chasing some major deals right now. Right? So that has been eradicated. Right? And we have leveled the playing field, and then we're, we're now out here on our merits. You wanna, you're here because you want to be here. You feel like it's best for your business to be here. And that's what we're always going to put ourselves in a position that people feel like that. Can you give us some very specific details on the major deals that you're working on? <laughs> so if I did that, then, then you know, then uh, it, it, it might be a problem some other places, right? So gotcha. if you read the paper, you know what's going on out here, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have another question in the audience. Hello there. Thank you for coming. Greetings. My name is Andrea Mitchell. I'm also an alumnus. I uh, have a question, well, a comment, then a question. Roughly 10 years ago, Mr. Jolly was here. He had a lot of vision. He had similar visions as he has now. And then he left and he's back. We have seen in the last 36 months how, how things happen when you express a vision and other people join in with your vision. My question is, since you're sitting under it, uh, it says, let it shine. What, what is the vision for the future? We have now, we have tracks for our students. We have different affiliations, organizations, entities. They have a lot of hope and directives. We even have a culinary arts program for our young people. You have a firefighter academy. There are a lot of options for the students. What's the future, Mr. Jolly? What's the future? That's a, a great question. Well, I think the future, uh, we are living it now. We are on our way to provide the, mac the optimum education for any student who lives in this district. Anything that they want to do, anything they want to achieve, they have that opportunity. Um, I think, again, you go back to rating schools and so forth, that's what we want to get away from. We just want every student that, that leaves here, they're prepared, ready to make a difference in the world. And I think that our district will prepare any student to go into a global society and be successful. So I think that's the vision going forward. We have to have programs. We have to have opportunities um, here here in, in Warrensville, not sending them other places. And we have to retain our best and brightest. So our best and brightest have to be here in our district. And, and continue to have 21st century buildings, 21st century facilities, 21st century instructors. And we should note, you were here as a principal. Uh, you left and went to Cleveland Metropolitan School District and then came back for, the, for this position. Yes, sir. 
All right, another question in the audience. We're going to be taking a break in just a moment. We'll take another of these questions as our panel is going to be changing. We'll be having a teacher and an intervention specialist and a student joining us, and you can line up to ask them some questions as well. But we'll take your questions now for the panel. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Pat Blahoviak. I'm a retired family physician and a member of the East Cleveland School Board. And one of the things that, unfortunately, we all need to deal with is the problems with drug and alcohol abuse in, and addiction in our students, especially, of course, the high school. Um, the work of Dr. Harvey Milkman suggests that if we get our students uh, involved and engrossed in a specific thing of their choosing, whether it's a sport or a music or chess or writing or whatever, they are less likely to become addicted. That they worked on that, especially in Finland, which had great success. And I'm wondering if you're thinking about that, and are you thinking about that in the elementary age, or the middle school, or the high school, or whatever? So, Thank you. Yeah, one of the investments that our school board has made is in social workers. So we have two social workers that across our district that really address issues um, any issue that we see with students and families. We also partner with Cleveland Clinic. So Cleveland Clinic is here, um, and they rotate and go to all our schools. We also um, partner with Beachwood and Family First to provide in-house mental um, health, alcohol counseling, all of that internal inside of our school. So we address it from kindergarten to 12th grade. So you didn't, uh, address my question? So her other point being that there are other activities where if students are engaged in those, they're less likely to be, be well, become addicted. Yeah, so. well, we have a prefler of activities. We, we have dancing classrooms. We have partnerships with um, Caramel House. We have um, sports in our, every, every grade level in our elementary schools. We high, have, high stepping, I think? High maybe? stepping. We got Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, all those things from pre-K all the way up. I think karate at, at John Dewey, soccer. Uh, um, soccer. Um, I can name so many things, activities that we have going on. We have partnerships with the YMCA. Mm -hmm. Our students are fully engaged. Um, the city sponsors basketball team, um, a rec basketball team. Uh, girls, recently, last Monday, we started basketball clinics at the high school for, for um, K to middle school. Um, our district, in combination with the library, in combination with the YMCA, have all types of programs for students. There's no reason for a student not to be engaged. As you can see here at Homework Club here, Cooking Club here at the library, um, you see how many students are here. So we are, we have, if you want to do something, it's here for you to do, and our school district pushes our students into it. And if I can add, those programs are year long. We have them during the school year, and they're throughout the summer, and they're even through over our holiday break. So our kids are engaged. We keep them busy. Yeah, the YMCA does a, uh, uh, we actually, our school district does a winter, uh, winter mm -hmm. camp for second and third graders. Um, we partner with B-Buzz to do baseball. Um, Football. I mean, we, we we have everything for students here. You don't stay st you don't stay stagnant, right? We, right. We'll stay I mean, we stagnant. always we always pitching new ideas to do something, right? Because uh, one thing about this town, somebody in this town got a bright idea, right? And so they're gonna let you know, like, let's try this. And what what used to happen here is that we were resistant to change, right? So now we're less resistant to change, and we just try it, right? And then because we just trying to get people involved, right? And the kids are responding to that. So now we now are making decisions on. Did this work? Did it not work? If it did work, let's continue. If it didn't work, let's tweak it. And then if it proves itself that it does not work, then we go another direction. I'm sure you're proud of all of the, the marks that came on your report card where you showed improvement. We said the F to a C in your overall grade. But you also went from an F to a C in your kindergarten to third grade literacy measure. You've been increased a lot of the pre-K programming to do that. Also, you went up from about 65% to 86% as your graduation rate since 2015. When you look at these statistics, which one do you think is, is sort of the top of the trophy case? Well, I think it's our pre-K to three literacy, which went to an F to a B. Um, the investment in our- To a F, B. To a B, yeah. Um, our John Dewey, which is our elementary school, is an A school. I think we have phenomenal ins instructors. And one of the things- uh, 
And one of the things I want to highlight about John Dewey and, and, and the teachers there, because when I first came, there was a group of teachers put me to the side and said, Mr. Jolly, we need to teach phonetics. We need to teach foundations. We weren't teaching that. That's phonetics like we all knew here. Um, we all grew up learning phon um, phonetics. And that was one of the first investments we made based on the teachers, because the teachers said that was something that we were missing. And I attribute the success of our district to our elementary teachers who have worked very hard to ensure that our students are reading at grade level. 100% of our third graders are eligible to move to the fourth grade. The third grade guarantee is not an issue here because of the great work of our pre-K, kindergarten first. I know we got great teachers across the district, but the primary teachers have really bought into what we what we trying to do here and that's provide our, our students with the best foundation possible. We'll be hearing from a first grade teacher in just a few moments in the next uh, part of this conversation. Uh, but while we have some folks here, let's say these last two, we'll take those questions for this panel, then we're gonna transition and bring up our other guests. Yes, ma'am, you're Hi. on. Yes, I'm a principal in Cleveland Heights University High School District. I know you are a former principal in Warrensville. And your name is? Rachel Coleman. Thank Very nice you. to see you. My husband is also a track coach here in Warrensville, yes. Um, I'd like to know, what are your expectations for your building principals, and what supports do you provide them in meeting these expectations, understanding that they guide the instructional practices in the building? So our, our, our principals, and being a former principal, we, they are the CEOs of the building. We, I, I look to them to run their building, um, but to be instructional leaders. They are charged with improving instruction on a daily basis. Uh, central office is support for the principal. So what we do is provide them with the resources, we provide them with the guidance, and sometimes we go in and model what we need them to do. Um, all our principals have different skill sets. Some can teach the lesson themselves, some need other people to go in and teach the lesson, some are excellent managers, but whatever, they need to help our teachers. Our central office is there to support them. Uh, with me having experience as being a principal, um, I, you know, I think I was a good principal when I was one. Um, I was, able, I'm able to go in and help people and provide guidance. Uh, but I think we have, we've built a great curriculum team, and our, uh, Dr. Caver is our assistant superintendent. We have a great curriculum team who have a wealth of experiences who are able to go in and provide the support for our principals. Now, we don't, and I don't believe in micromanaging principals and telling them what to do on a daily basis. We give them the opportunity to lead their buildings, to do what's necessary to be successful, but also we have to make sure that we cover the necessary materials the students need, but, and give our principals the resources and teachers the resources they need to be successful. So I think our blueprint is that we hire great principals who are instructional leaders and then we provide them with all the support necessary for them to be successful and for our teachers to be supported. Okay, yes sir. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Richard Felton and I teach mathematics and you know I'm serious about it because I didn't say math. <laughs> uh, um, I've also taught long enough that I know that, that the state report card is complex and doesn't always indicate what's really going on because I thought, okay, overall C, let's see what the graduation rate is. And I believe that was it's a C. A C. Yeah. So, but then I also look at the achievement rate because supposedly that's what the graduation rate is based upon are the students who pass the test. Mm -hmm. So I look at your tests here and it says uh, proficient around 25%, basic 27% and limited 40%. My question is, and again, I know it's comp complex. My question is, and I'm also looking at the scores for the, uh, I'm sorry, the passage rates for the individual subjects, and I see algebra one, 12%, and geometry 16%, all the others are a little, much higher. But my question is, did the state's changing of the graduation requirements, adding uh, career pathways and capstone projects, did that play a part in the graduation rate? Yeah, it did. I mean, the capstone projects, the opportunities for other pathways did. 100% it did. Yes, sir. He, he drilled into that report card the way my dad would drill into my report card, <laughs> getting down to the nitty-gritty. But the fact of the matter is there are still a lot of areas where you see need for improvement. Yeah, we, we acknowledge that math is an area of concern. But I will say that most people in this room do not have to pass a test to gra graduate high school. 
Most people didn't. So, you know, I am very critical, like a lot of people are very critical of scores and things like that, but most people of our age did not have to pass a proficiency test to graduate. It's much harder for a student to graduate now from high school than it was for anybody that's over 35 years old. Mike, much can harder. We, can we Mayor? Can, can I say something about the, to, to his point, the, the, the point of advocacy, right? Because there was, there was a state board of education down there and the folks that were on the board, they had an idea of how it should operate, right? But if you don't live in a community like this or one like that, you have no idea what it takes to cut the mustard every day, right? And so you, you, know, you had folks that would, not on purpose, but because they had no experience, would discount that, right? You have, there's some factors here that you have to account for. And so now to, 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 to uh, the state reps, uh, the school board reps point, Merle Johnson, Right, we have people down there that advocate that advocate for other communities now, and now it's more level, and so more level it gives everybody a better opportunity to to uh, say who you are. Because it's one thing to look at your statistical numbers; I can take a stat and flip it a hundred different ways, and you think I was an all star, but I wasn't. <laughs> 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 so it's how it's you have to dig into the numbers, you have to dig into the details, right? And that's what I think we've done a good job in trying to dig into, dig into the details to figure out how we needed to meet kids to put them on a better pathway forward. Are you making reference? Did you, did you play like professional sports or something? Uh, shortly. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do want to note, too, that uh, to the point of the math scores, we're one of our other guests. So we have a first grade teacher coming. We're going to have a math intervention specialist as well. So we're going to address uh, a lot of those issues that are important to you all. Before we wrap this part of the conversation, I know we're taking it a, a little bit long, but, but that's because you guys have had some great questions and comments. I'd like to maybe get a thought from each of you on if I'm listening to this conversation from my school district that's in F or D in risk of going to F or maybe under state control already. And I say, what can I look to Warrensville Heights to teach me? You have students in poverty, you have school lunch and breakfast programs, you have transient community, you have a lot of the issues other school districts have and yet we're seeing this success. So what, what could they take away from your experience that might help them? Tracy? I'll kick it off. I think one of the things that they can, they can take away is a school board that is committed and concerned and has compassion for the children of, of the district. We have had a total of about 16 different school board members since 2000. We are, we've, we have re-elected two. We have three of us up for re-election now, and it's because we're coming back to continue the job that we set out to do. Um, I think something else that we do as a school board is allow Mr. Jolly to bring the programs to the district despite any demographic or socioeconomic challenge. And we turn those into opportunities. And we let Mr. Jolly and his team bring the programming to the schools, the social workers to the schools, anything that those kids need to be successful without micromanaging. We have hired a great superintendent. We have hired a great treasurer. We have let them do their job. And they've been able to put the programs in place without that microscope over them, demanding that they do things a certain way. They're allowed to work and do as they need to. Mayor, your thoughts? I would just say that the one thing to keep it going forward, you, we have to stay progressive. We have to be not satisfied with where we are. You gotta figure out how you can always push to the next level. I think the collaboration of another district is looking forward. You gotta get out of your comfort zone, right? You gotta get out of the way you've been doing business. If you're struggling, you have to empower yourself by empowering yourself with people around you that may have an, a different idea that may lead you somewhere else. The one thing I can just say the, uh, that I'm thankful for every day, the collaboration I have with this district is, I, I can't say that everybody has that. We've been able to reach out to one another and try to figure out what, what, what voice need to be filled. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful of uh, some, some relationships we've had out here. Superintendent had a relationship with, with uh, CMSD's uh, CEO, Eric, Eric Gordon, right? And I mean, he came out to Warrensville a couple times here to sit down and just say, okay, this is what I see, right? Hmm. We took that back, Superintendent Jolly took that back and kind of molded a little bit different. 
and then we went on about our way. But you have to reach out to some folks because it's, it's guaranteed. There's somebody out here that knows a way. So relationships. Mm -hmm. And we'll end with you, Superintendent Jolly. What, what could another district learn from your story? Well, I think our story is based upon focusing on the students. Plain and simple, we focus on students. Um, it's not adult-driven, student-driven. But we respect the adults because the adults have to do the, the work. They have to do the work. But everything centers around students and exposing students to what they need to be successful. I think the mayor spoke earlier about meeting people where they are. You have to identify the weaknesses. You have to immediately address the weaknesses and provide the support that's necessary. I think <coughs> coming from the, from the top, you, we, we have to be visible, and you have to inspect what you expect. You can't send mandates down and not inspect it and then not do it. You have to be part of the process. Um, I think one of our successes is that we have people here that are willing to get their hands dirty and go teach a lesson or go um, assist in the lunchroom or do the things that's necessary. So I think other districts looking at us um, is collaboration with all stakeholders using um, the resources in the community, um, leading by example, um, and focuses on students. Superintendent Donald Jolly II, very good to talk with you, and Board President Tracy Mitchell and Mayor Brad Sellers as well. They're going to join our live audience now, and we're going to take a break. When we return, we'll continue our conversation with two teachers and a Warrensville Heights High School student getting their perspectives on how the district has improved. We'll include more thoughts from our live audience as well. From the Warrensville Heights branch of the Cuyahoga County Public Library, this is the Sound of Ideas Community Tour. I'm Mike McIntyre, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. So glad to have you back. That was a really, really, really good interview um, that the Sound of Ideas put on uh, with our with our trio there. I mean, they were pretty darn awesome. And the great questions from the audience, really poignant, added value to the whole situation. Um, so I hope you guys got a lot out of that. Um, I hope that you have something that you can converse about, be proud of knowing that our leadership has placed us in, we are in good hands, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's really important to know. So uh, I guess I wanna conclude this program because we, we were running a little long today, but I do wanna conclude this program by stating a little bit about what's going on in this country. Um, so changing the hearts and minds of men, ladies and gentlemen, it's not an easy thing to do. You dig? You can protest all day, you know, and then some. But until hearts and minds change, until black folks start coming together and from the lower socioeconomic strata and the upper echelon of wealth, until we can come along and look at each other as equals, maybe with different material substance, but we're equals. And until we can come along and be solidified why should anybody ever respect us you know we only get together and protest and then it goes away until the next thing happens and then we protest some more and then it goes away what's good warrensville is a case in point of a predominantly african-american community that is striving to pull itself up and move forward in a very positive direction and I wanted to focus on that. All of y'all that happen to be tuning in to this broadcast are part of the solution, not part of the problem. And I truly appreciate you. I thank you so much for looking at this broadcast and being a part of it. Share it with your friends. Share it with those who have love for this city and let them know that there's a whole lot of good going on in Warrensville. So until the next time, y'all, we're going to play part three next week of the Sound of Ideas, of course. But until the next time, y'all, on behalf of my wife, Stephanie, and myself, I want to say God bless you, God keep you, and I love you. So what's good, Warrensville? <laughs>